I think when you look at the Bible and try to come out with a central theme, I think the best place to look is the high priestly prayer of Jesus in John 17. That is obviously the, the absolute crux of his earthly life and ministry. He's going to the cross the next morning. He's on the cusp of that. It's the longest recorded prayer we have of Jesus in the scriptures. He's bearing his soul to the Father. And I think in that prayer, we see what the Bible is about, what redemptive history is about, what human history is about. And I think when you look at it, if you take John 17 and you begin to take it apart into its constituent parts, you end up with the theme of the Bible being something like this, that God is redeeming a people by His Son, for His Son, to His own glory. I think when you think about each of those words, each of them is crucial and you see them unfold in John 17. God is obviously the one who is initiating this process. In eternity past, in the Council of the Trinity, He decided to create, He decided to allow man to fall, and He decided out of that fall in humanity to redeem some to, to Himself and to give as a love gift to His Son. So God, God is redeeming. You know, the redemptive process is continuing. We are saved at a moment in time. We are, we are regenerated, born again at a moment in time. But the process begun at that moment continues throughout life and sanctification and isn't complete until glorification. So He is redeeming. It's a, it's a process that started with the sending of His Son and the accomplishment of redemption in the life and ministry and death, of course, and resurrection of Jesus. And then that the application of redemption happens in time. There comes a moment in time when the Holy Spirit opens our eyes, gives us life, allows us to see with faith and repentance the truth of the gospel, to believe, and that process begins. But it continues, as I said, throughout this life and until we're with the Lord and ultimately till the second coming um, when all of that uh, will be complete for all of those who have believed in Jesus Christ. And so God is redeeming a people. This isn't a plan that has sort of a nondescript group in mind. This is a plan that has a specific people that God in eternity past gave to the Son as a gift. And you see that so beautifully in John 17, where again and again Jesus talks about those whom the Father has given me, those whom the Father has given me. That means He came intentionally to redeem and to save His people. And that's what, that's what the angel Gabriel told Joseph when he announced the birth of Christ to him. He said, call His name Jesus, for He will save His people from their sins. He came for the people that were His, the people that God had given Him. So God is redeeming a people by His Son. That's clear when you look at the, the record starting from Genesis 3.15, all of the prophets leads up to the Gospels and then the epistles explain it further. This redemption, this plan is accomplished, initiated by the Father in eternity past, and accomplished by the Son in history. And, and then God is redeeming a people by His Son for His Son. That again reminds us that we are caught up as believers in this inner Trinitarian gift where the Father has given this people to His Son. And so He's redeeming a people that the Father has given Him. They are for Him. All things ultimately, right, are by Him and through Him and for Him, but in a unique way, those whom He is redeeming are His, and He wants them to be with Him. And then finally, for His own glory. God is doing all of this certainly for our sakes. His love is genuine and true, and He is loving by nature. And so His love and grace is set upon us, but the ultimate purpose of God is beyond us, and that is His own glory. To display to all humanity, to the angels, and even to the Son, 
his glory by all that he's accomplishing. So that's the theme of the Bible. God is redeeming a people by his son, for his son, to his own glory.